Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Brock Roll. All right, so there's gonna be a little bit of a continuity error. It actually turns out I have a video that I started shooting a couple days ago, and I am about two days into it, but at this point, that video is on hold because I have to wait for something that's gonna take about six weeks to, to finish up. So this is sort of a tie-on to that video, even though you're gonna see it before the first video. Uh, I was out doing something yesterday, and on the way back, I happen to remember that somebody mentioned in a live stream that Lake Waco was back to its normal uh, levels and that seemed really odd to me because it's been like 20 feet low for the last couple years and while we've had a little bit of rain this winter it hasn't been a whole lot and so it seemed odd to me that that could be the case so I decided to take a trip out there and look and confirm that yes it is and true the lake is actually almost to like flood stage right now so I don't know exactly what happened like I said we've had a little bit of rain uh, probably more than usual in the winter, but you know, I, I would, couldn't say it was any more than five or six inches, but who knows, you know, maybe something happened upstream and it, it came down on the river and it's just for the last, you know, several months or so, the river has been slowly filling it back up again. But whatever the case is, the lake is back to like what I would call flood stage. And that made me start thinking about something else that I'd read recently. And that is that they had resumed feeding water into the Lake Waco wetlands. Now, I've been there a couple times and I don't know, it's a, it's a nice pretty area, but there's not a lot of moisture out there and not a lot of wildlife out there, which is the two things you kind of think of when you think of wetlands. But maybe it's just because we've been in this drought uh, condition for such a long time and and in reality, now that they're feeding water back into the area again, you know, maybe we'll actually uh, see some wildlife. So I decided I wanted to go out and check it out and see myself uh, how the wetlands have fared in the last uh, couple years. And so that's our trip for today. Oh yeah, I could see from here that there's water out on the wetlands now. So hopefully we'll get some good uh, wildlife video out here. We'll see. It's still pretty dead out here at this point. You know, we've hit, we've had kind of the, the worst part of winter in the last month or so, and so it takes a little while for stuff to bounce back. But I do see a few birds in the air over there. That's encouraging. And I do hear sounds out in the uh, water, which indicates maybe like frogs or stuff out there. Like I said, I've never seen water in this. I do remember some of these piers are a little sketchy. I see they're replacing some of the, the wood planks with this synthetic stuff. That's probably a good idea for an area that gets the kind of moisture this area does. Not necessarily from the wetlands, but from the uh, the rain that we get. And of course the constant exposure to the sun and the elements all the rest of the time. There's one that needs to be replaced. I think I'll just avoid that one. I don't think I even want to go out on some of this thing. That thing even looks more rickety than this thing. There's a land path over there. I think I'm going to go back. <clears throat> I don't mind the fact this thing's wobbling a little bit, but there's some of these planks on here that are not in very good shape. to fall in. It'd probably make it to the blooper rail though, wouldn't it? I don't know how deep some of this is. Okay, we 
survived. Let's go wander over there and see if we can see anything interesting. Hard to believe that in three months this will have all sprung back to life and it'll be green out here. Doesn't look like it now, does it? So I've noticed it does some improvements around here. They, uh, the, I noticed on the area you come down by the uh, visitor center up there, there's almost like a little family area with picnic, bench, uh, picnic benches and a few things for the kids to climb on and stuff like that. And I don't remember this kind of thing being out here either. I would bet you this would be great for like schools. You, know, you could have somebody in here, you know, giving a little information about, uh, you know, what's going on in this part of the wetlands and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool that this, they uh, are still serious about keeping this thing going. And they definitely got the water back in here, so that's good. Like I said, I've never seen the water in here before. I don't know if you hear it over the wind noise, but there's a lot of frog activity out here. going down in there though that's too marshy down there it's for it's funny when I first came down the hill from the uh, from the visitor center I heard these guys and I mean I'm clearly half a mile from there now you can't even see the visitor center you can sort of see the little thing I was walking on over there, on the uh, way over there, and the visitor center is beyond that, and I can hear them all the way over here. Probably a lot of bugs out there right now. way off there in the distance and uh, they're probably hunting for small rodents and stuff like that that would seem to imply that there's probably something like that over there because I see at least, at least five birds up there and I don't think they'd all be there if there wasn't something for them some reason for them to be there of course sometimes uh, birds like that that soar like a hawk sometimes they're riding an updraft too and that just might be where the updraft is because you come to think of it there's a couple more way way up there and they do all kind of be circling around which is what they tend to do when they're on an updraft this is kind of interesting I was just kind of walking along the edge of the water here and I see these kind of light brown patches uh, kind of on the on the surface of uh, whatever the debris is that's floating on the water and I look closer and it's moving I don't know if you can tell from here, but that's actually like a colony of ants And somehow they're creating little trails going around in the water to get to different places probably to find uh, food But it was, that's interesting. There's another one over there And there's one there and several of them over here. I, like I said, I wasn't really paying that much attention to them until I looked at one of them. It's like, wait, that thing's moving. Isn't that amazing how kind of life just kind of uh, does what it needs to? I got a calling ants right out in the middle of a, of a wetland here floating around on the debris and they've figured out how to get around. How awesome is that? Ain't nature wonderful? See, it's funny, the, the frogs are all on the other side of the, the wetlands there, and we can still hear them clearly here.
little wild mushroom action going on here. I don't know, we may not show you wildlife, but we'll show you ants and mushrooms. That'll push this video to number one, right? It's a perfect day to be out here. Temperature's like in the mid-60s, got a nice sun out. Nice breeze at my back. Little nature to look at. And I got the place pretty much all to myself. There were two cars in the parking lot and I'm sure one of them is the, uh, is the person that uh, mans the guard station. And probably the other one was uh, the woman and her kid that were at that play area I told you about at the beginning. hear the frogs. I guess the river's just on the other side of that little grove of trees there. And I suspect it's probably the river that brought the water level up in the lake more than anything else. There must have lot been a lot of water coming into that river uh, elsewhere and it just kind of flowed down to here, ended up in our lake. Because like I said, I don't think we've had any more than maybe four inches of rain all season, you know, since uh, since the fall. And I mean, that lake was 20 feet de uh, down, so there's got to be something that uh, did more than just four inches of rain, right? Yeah, you can see the visitor center now on the other side. A little water in here too. I think this is actually how they kind of get the water in. They open up that little channel there which goes into the river. When the river is at high level, the water flows in. And then basically eventually over jumps this road and fills in the whole area. It's kind of a good thing to do not only for the wildlife but any of the water that sits here will seep into the ground and recharge the, uh, the water table. Which is something you got to do when you get a lot of moisture. A lot of Waco's water comes from the, uh, from the lake, but the rest of it comes from wells. And something's got to recharge those wells. <clears throat> oh, there's a little bird activity down there on the ground. So I see a sign over here, uh, over in this little section that says bee tree on it. And I think that's a beehive over there. I want to get over there and take a close look, but unfortunately I got to figure out how to get over there without getting my feet wet. I don't know, but is this an option here? Looks like this might be what people have been doing. Yeah, 
there's some moisture there too, but I think I made it. Oh yeah, there's definitely a beehive there. It says proceed with caution. I'm not gonna irritate them, but Zoom in a little closer here. It's not a very warm day, so they're probably not, doesn't look like they're very active. So that's uh, maybe going to be the bulk of it today. We're going to get to see some bees and some ants and listen to some frogs. But that's okay. It's kind of cool that stuff like this is out here. Well, looks like I got a choice to make. I either got to brave one more sketchy bridge right here or I got to go all the way back there, all the way over, and then back over there. I think we're going to try the sketchy bridge here. I did survive the first one and... I think it looks sketchier than it actually was. And once I get across over there, it's a land bridge all the way over. So we'll just take it easy and watch my step. And of course, we'll keep the camera running the whole time. So if something happens, you'll get to see it. through right there what I'm kind of doing is staying in the middle it looks like there's a, a post going down the middle so by staying in the middle I'm kind of walking on the strongest part at least in theory this whole thing needs to be replaced with these synthetic logs uh, and I'm guessing that's probably an enormous amount of money which is probably why it hasn't happened yet but like I said, it does look like they're putting some money into this place, so maybe that will happen at some point. Get some rich anonymous donor to donate $100,000 worth of those synthetic planks. Hey, it could happen, right? Maybe I'll just put it on my Amazon wish list. 100000 Dollars are the synthetic planks. Send it to the Lake Waco wetlands. Cause see, what would happen is people would send it to my house, and I had to figure out how to get a hundred thousand dollars worth of planks over here. You know, just thinking ahead. See, I was seeing these here a little bit while I was walking out here. That's another one of those ant colonies, just kind of clinging to the side of a branch there. It's a trip. That's kind of cool that they kind of encourage all forms of life out here. That's a bat house. I've been thinking about doing something like that in my yard. Uh, bats, uh, you know, are good uh, good creatures to have. They aren't they aren't aggressive. They don't turn you into vampires, but they do eat insects and eat a lot of them. So that's a bat house right there. Just a little tiny one. Probably couldn't hold many more than maybe 30 or 40 bats, but that's enough to eat a lot of insects around here. So I don't know. Like I said, that may be a future project where I work on a bat house myself. All right, so I thought this was some weird uh, firewood collection or something like that. But apparently this is a little bit more complicated. This is what they're calling a bug house. 
it's an environment designed to uh, protect insects uh, that burrow in wood and stuff like that. There's certain ones like the bamboo, so you got bamboo. They got twigs and branches in here for beetles. Uh, got a bunch of holes drilled into them so that the insects can go in here. They can protect themselves in the winter. And uh, they're protected from uh, predators by the, by the uh, netting over the outside of it. That's kind of interesting. Apparently that was some kid's uh, eagle project. Well, it is nice to see this area has water in it again. Uh, like I said, I've never seen uh, a lot of water in here. Sometimes there's a little bit, but I have never seen it as filled as it is right now. So that's a good thing. It's probably a little bit early in the season because nothing's really bounced back yet. But it'll be interesting to maybe come back here in April or May and see how this, how, how this place has dealt with all the water out here now because uh, we should hopefully really see some good stuff out here then. It should be really pretty about the time that uh, wildflowers start blooming and all that stuff. We're coming up on that again. But it was still fun to get out here. It's, you know, you gotta get out, out every once in a while and just enjoy the fresh air. And I don't know, it's a little brown, a little, little depressing out here, but it is fun what what few things we did see out here and it was a good day so i hope you enjoyed uh coming along for things like this uh we'll try this again uh, at some other point and and uh go from there so thank you as always for watching and i'll see you next time on escaping the mouse good night